Virtual commissioning with KUKA SIM is today's topics. And what do we mean with virtual commissioning? And before I continue, of course, welcome any questions you might have. Please write them out uh, in the dashboard you have on the right side of GoToWebinar. There's a, a, a tab called questions. Write them there and I will see them directly. So what do we mean with virtual commissioning and KUKASIM? Well, KUKASIM offers the possibility not only to simulate the robot, but actually to virtually test Simulate, simulate and commissioning a complete automation cell. That means that not only the robot code be tested, but we can also test the PLC code and probably the HMI code as well. As in almost all applications, the robot is not a standalone product, but is controlled by a PLC in a cell, uh, which also has uh, its own HMI. And at the end of the day, to get a complete test, tested functionality, you want to test all these codes, the robot code, PLC code, HMI code, all running together. And that is what we, you actually can do with KUKASIM. It also, of course, gives us uh, the possibility of doing collision detection and checking cycle time. But using all these codes together, we can verify sequence logic in all operating modes. We can use the HMI together with KUKA SIM and test, uh, for example, the operator behavior. Uh, usually the programmer of the HMI expects the operator to behave in a certain way, and perhaps that is not the case. And we can have an, even use this model to do some operator training before the cell actually exists. So, as I said, we offer the possibility of verifying the PLC code. And usually when we want to test and verify in for a commissioning or an acceptance test of some kind, we want to simulate the actual codes without any extra code embedded in order to drive a simulate or simulate a specific uh, process response or so on. We want to test the actual code we are going to use in the, in the delivered cell. So this model is actually based that you have no need to create any extra code within HMI or PLC or robot application to drive this uh, uh, simulation. And equally important when we create what we could call this digital twin is that the effort of creating this model should be kept as an at an absolute minimum as possible. So you don't have to spend hundreds of hours setting up this model for simulation because if we if that's required then the economic winning of it is much less of course. And of course, at the end of the day, one of the prerequisites to be successful with this is that we can actually do the complete simulation of the complete cell, including the PLC and HMI and so on, without any actual hardware installed. We're just going to do it virtually in a PC environment. But why do we want to do uh, virtual commissioning? Uh, what is there to gain with it? Well, FAT or factory acceptance test and commissioning is usually a large, very large part of the total automation project. Regardless if you are an integrator or an end customer, you have experienced this probably firsthand. And quite often actually the FAT and commissioning of a project could be as much as 25 to 30 percent of the total project cost actually mostly because these acceptance tests require a lot of resources and 
actually studies have shown that up to two thirds of an acceptance test or the pre-acceptance test is spent on fixing software errors. And this is not my information. This is can be found in, in documents in field studies. Uh, you see the link to the source of this information down below. And which means that a really big slice of the project time is an acceptance test. And actually, if we could get rid of all these softwares we need to fix during the acceptance test or before the acceptance test, of course, the time spent on the acceptance test would be much, much lower. And thereby, we will have a huge win in terms of time and of money, of course which we now could either use as time left over or extra earning in our project or secure our margin in the project. But of course, also ensure that the project is delivered in time. Uh, this topic of virtual commissioning is not really new. It's been talked about in the markets for quite some years. I'm sure that most of you have heard about it since you are here listening to me today. And one of the feedbacks we sometimes get is that virtual commissioning is usually only usable for very big and very time critical projects because virtual commissioning is expensive and a bit complicated. And we will get back to this, but Again, referring to a field study done where they looked into a very small uh, automation project, a PLC, which controlled a system with only six, 17 sensors and 10 actuators, which is, as you, I think you might agree, a very small proj uh, project. They did a virtual commissioning and found out that the quality increase at the acceptance test and by this, they do mean the quality increase as defined of fulfillment of the requirements actually rose from 37 to 84%. And furthermore, uh, the real commissioning time was reduced by 75%. And the total time to market for the total project was actually shortened by 15%. That means that there's actually some winnings to do even outside of the acceptance test. And I will get back to this uh, later on in my presentation to show you this. You can find this information in uh, the publication listed below. If you Google it, uh, you can read the complete report. So, if we want to test this uh, virtual commissioning, I have uh, divided today's webinar in two parts. And in order to actually do this successfully, we need to, of course, know how to set up the simulation environment or a digital twin, if you like, what type of softwares we need to use. And we are equally important is to understand how to best implement this in our project and how we handle the project. And this is important because we do want to spend as little effort as possible setting up this model, if you will call it like that. So virtual commissioning here, and of course, as uh, the headline for this webinar pointed out, we are going to use KUKA SIM as our tools to do the virtual commissioning. And for those of you who don't really know what KUKASIM is, it is our 3D simulation tool, which is to a very large extent used for robot simulation, testing the 3D environment of the robot, testing the reach of the robot, testing the cycle time of the robot, doing collision detection of the robot. And today we're obviously going to do a little bit more with KUKASIM, but 
bear with me a bit because Kuka Sim is actually also an excellent sales tool if it comes to explaining and demonstrating a concept cell. And actually, to create a layout suggestion for an automation cell together with the customer is basically as easy as using PowerPoint. You look at the cell layout I did in the lower right corner, it actually took me round about half an hour to do that layout and I did it together with my customer at, during our discussion. And to be able to show the customer such a layout directly is an extremely effective way of selling your project. Uh, and you can actually add quite simply another function and that is since the robot itself is movable in the model you can do a very early verification of reach and cycle time within KUKASIM at the customer side directly. And it is also important that, of course, KUKASIM is a licensed software, but the license is a floating one. That means that you can have uh, the software installed on several machines, both your salespeople, your project leader, your engineer, and then transfer the license to the one per resource that needs the license at that time. So you will get a very long way with only one license of uh, KUKASIM. Now, assuming we have now won the project, I have a question here uh, regarding receives the right signals and I will get back to that a little bit, how we connect it to the PLC. Uh, we have now won the project we tried to sell to our customer in this scenario and the project is started and what probably is one of the first parts of the project is the mechanical design. Uh, our mechanical engineering department will do a layout model, they will start to do 3D construction or of whatever parts we're going to sell. And they are, of course, not used, working directly in KUKA SIM. They, uh, and KUKA SIM is not applying to be a CAD system, and you probably have those already. But KUKA SIM can import basically any CAD format, 3D or 2D CAD format, directly into. And by doing that, we ensure that we are simulating in the actual design that we are going to create. So the simulation is based on the actual mechanical design we are setting up in the CAD system. And most CAD systems already have a 3D environment. So why are not why are we not doing the simulation directly in the mechanical engineer in the CAD system? Well what KUKA Sim adds to this world is that they have an event and a physics engine for simulation. To be very concrete, I will get back to this example, but if we have a conveyor belt, for example, and we place a, a box, a parcel or package on this conveyor belt, and we then tell the conveyor belt to start moving with a certain speed. The box itself will start moving in the simulation according to the speed of the conveyor belt. And if we then have a sensor along the conveyor belt at some point, the sensor will be triggered automatically when the box uh, affects the sensor. That is what I mean when KUKA SIM has an event and physics engine for simulation. This is usually not found in a CAD system. There are a few CAD systems which has these events as an add-on, but they are usually quite expensive and limited in their functionality. So better to use KUKA SIM, which is a tool made for this kind of uh, simulation. And of course, KUKA SIM also has a collection, uh, collision detection. That means that if the robots, for example, of for some reason collides, we will see that clearly in our model. And 
of course, we can also dynamically exchange data with outside software from KUKASIM. For example, the PLC uh, controller, a virtual PLC controller. So if we take this example I just described, the speed of this conveyor comes from the PLC code setting a speed to a frequency converter, for example. And when the sensor on the conveyor is affected, that signal will be sent directly back to the PLC. So the PLC can react according to the code written in the PLC. This can be done in KUKASIM and usually not in a CAD system, for example. But of course we do, and that means also that we need some more stuff than KUKASIM in our software model. We of course need someone who creates the robot code. And in the KUKA world, we have a software called WorkVisual, which is our offline programming tool. And in WorkVisual, we configure the behavior of the robots, the application of the robot, and create the robot code itself. And this robot code is then downloaded into KUKA Office Lite. And KUKA Office Lite is the software that emulates the robot controller. So instead of downloading our application into a real robot controller, we can then download it into the software KUKA Office Lite, which emulates the robot controller itself. It has the same behavior as the robot controller. And also there is a smart pad emulated. That is the uh, robot pendant. We will have a virtual one of those in Google Office Lite. So we can do manual movement or manual settings just as an operator would do on directly on uh, the pendant here. And of course, if we have several robots in our cell, we need several instances of this Office Lite, one per robot. Uh, I see I have a few questions here, but I have a hard time actually seeing them. Uh, do you mean that KUKASIM also supported with gravity compensation? I'm not sure you mean what with that question actually. But yes, there is a physics describing gravity in uh, KUKASIM. That is correct. Now, in an automation cell, uh, we need a PLC and an HMI, usually, almost all the time, there is a PLC and an external HMI uh, in the application. And let's see, I have a few more questions here. Uh, one of the question is, does Office Lite require a virtual machine like VMware running on your computer? And yes, that is correct. That is absolutely correct. Uh, the Office Lite runs on a VMware machine. We also have a question regarding what PLC types are supported. And actually, the, I'll get back to this, but actually most PLC types. That means, and it depends a little bit on the software created by each the PLC supplier. We will just shortly see how it is interfaced to KUKASIM and that will explain. And there's also an idea question with this idea work with all common PLC types. Yes, the idea is to have an open system which supports all PLC types. So uh, we have a PLC and an HMI. And of course, the PLC supplier provides a PLC code uh, development platform and an HMI development platform. And this is 
can, in most cases, be downloaded into a virtual PLC controller and a virtual HMI. That means a software which emulates the actual PLC and the actual HMI. And the connection between KUKA SIM and the virtual PLC controller is actually OPC UA. And the same way is that KUKA Office Lite also can communicate with KUKA SIM through OPC UA. It should be pointed out here that for those of you who are have been using KUKA SIM earlier, it is like you probably know that you can create a robot program in KUKA SIM. And in the current version of KUKA SIM, the code generated in KUKA SIM, if you choose to do some programming in KUKA SIM, is not exactly the same as what you can do in Work Visual or rather that the code in Kuka SIM is quite limited compared to the code you do in Work Visual. So to get the best effect of this model, you actually uh, we actually recommend that you use Work Visual to create the real code because that is the code you will use at the end of the day and not do the code in Kuka SIM. The PL and the office light will then run the robot as the robot controller and just sending basically the access positions over to KUKA SIM. So it will be office light that drives the robot movement and not KUKA SIM actually. This is to get a simulation which is so as close to the reality as possible. Uh, I see I have a few more questions. I have a hard time seeing them. Uh, there are conveyors shown in the left picture of page five. Can KUKA SIM handle, for instance, profit drive controllers such as the conveyors work and the PLC receives the right signals? Well, KUKA SIM will not con uh, communicate with the drive itself, but it it can be connected with, for example, the profit drive block of the PLC. And if we connect the output speed from uh, the drive itself, the conveyor will behave according to the output speed. If we need some kind of feedback to the pro drive block, for example, a pulse counter, we will then need the next part of uh, the simulation, which we need to add. To be able to run the virtual commissioning and the simulation, these softwares are actually not enough. We need one more step to create this. And the question, is for a little bit more complicated in a really simple application this model we see here is quite sufficient but and since we're talking about profit drive and so on i expect that you are using siemens softwares which are quite common here in the nordics and of course then this model which would look like this with step seven and wins the c to create the plc and hmi code and then it is important to use the PLC SIM advanced software from Siemens and not only the PLC SIM software because it's only PLC SIM advanced that has the, uh, the OPC UA interface. But what we probably also need is some kind of a process behavior model software. And what is that? Well, the process and why do we need it? Well, the process behavior model is to tell the simulation how the process reacts. Now, KUKA SIM has some of this functionality. For example, I just what according to what I described earlier, KUKA SIM also has an internal script script engine or an API so we can create 
events or feedback, if we so like, directly from KUKA SIM, according to the example I described earlier. But it's it's also in in terms of a behavior model, it's a more simple one, which means that in some cases we also need a third party of uh, behavior model softwares. For example, uh, is one of the examples taken up in the question here with uh, the profit drive blocks, for example. If we take Siemens uh, process model, uh, the SIMIT, they have direct support of that. So that's much easier to integrate there, of course. Uh, but also other uh, scenarios which are harder to simulate. For example, to simulate signal exchange with higher level systems, often an automation level cell has orders from an MPS system, for example which need to be simulated or it could be information passing from an upstream uh, automation cell and in the same way a need to pass on information to the next uh, automation cell downstream if this cell is sitting in a line and that needs to be simulated as well uh, it could be a need of creating more advanced process feedback uh, calculations and there are, as I mentioned, softwares dedicated to this task. Simit is one, WinMod is another, and I'm quite sure there are quite a few others, including the applications you can write on your own. And of course, there's also sometimes a need of to emulate manual operations uh, in the model of, in itself. And as a WinMod or a SIMIT, for example, can do a memory shared communication with both PLC and robot, that would be a higher performance communication as well, which is sometimes also needed. And in some cases, we actually showed this to a customer not long ago, which said, okay, fine, I want to continue SIMIT because I've already built up a library of standard objects here and of course then you should use what you have and not re-engineer it a second time in KUKASIM. So if we now look at the complete model we have a software platform where we can include our robot code, we can include our PLC code and in this case we are pointing fingers to Siemens applications, but this could just as well be a Mitsubishi PLC, a Beckhoff PLC, an Allen Bradley PLC, because we are using the open OPC UA communication interface, which means that this model we have here is really flexible in terms of what brands we are using in an automation cell. And the same goes for the behavior model, we are using Simit, we can just as well use, uh, for example, Beckhoff, and I'm sure there are other models out there as well. Uh, so we have a flexible and open system, but for creating a digital platform and testing and simulating it, uh, we can cover basically all PLCs and HMI brands as long as they support these uh, open communication standards. And it's thereby a fully scalable digital platform going from single signals from to the complete cells, testing all the parts which are a part of the automation cell. And actually, I'm not sure all of you know, but Perhaps you know there is a software on the market called Visual Components, which is a simulation tool, a testing tool to create complete flow simulations of a complete line or complete factory. And the focus is, and actually what is less known is that Visual Components is actually a part of KUKA. And KUKA SIM is, if you like, a Visual Components light software. 
That means that the model we create in KUKASIM is fully open to use in visual components. In fact, KUKASIM and visual components are so closely re related so that objects which are created in KUKASIM or objects created in visual components are freely movable to the other software. That means that we can test and simulate a automation cell in KUKASIM and perhaps the end customer ha already has visual components. He can then import this simple uh, simulation and use it directly to simulate a part of his complete line in visual components. So that means that this model we are describing here is actually the only product on the market which has within one model, a complete virtual commissioning and simulation model from one by one IO up to a complete flow of a line, which makes this solution actually unique in the market. So um, that described how the software model was set up. I have in the webinar here included a handout on the, under the tab handout in the control panel, a document describing uh, this software setup we just saw in, uh, in a Word document. You can download it from under the tab handouts if you like and read it more closely. And that pretty much describes the first part uh, which we needed, the know-how of how to set up our simulation project. The second part is how to use it during our project to get the most out of it. And let's shortly uh, have a look at that as well. Now, if you take standard automation project, when you start planning for the project and when, or when you do a calculation for the project cost, most of us do a Gantt diagram looking somewhat like this. We have a few different engineering steps before we reach a FAT and SAT. Uh, most of you will have something like this. But the problem is even if the project runs fairly well, the reality is not really going 100% according to plan. For any number of reasons, some of these parts either take longer time than they were anticipated to take, or they cannot be started in time, creating a few delays, very often due to that the resource required wasn't available when it was planned. At the end of the day, that means that when we come to a factory acceptance test or a site acceptance test, we have very long working days and we have need for a lot of resources in the projects of all uh, types. Regardless if you're an integrator or an end user, you have probably experienced this firsthand. And furthermore, and that usually happens in both during the FAT, but also during the commissioning. And that also uses up, ends up that the time after the uh, commissioning uh, is longer than expected because we have uh, a bit f f more points of more, how do you say, cosmetic points and documentary points that we need to be covered than we first anticipated. And this, of course, costs us a hell of a lot of money. And that is what the simulation uh, is aiming at closing. And then we can handle simulation in the project in two ways. And the first way, and still the most common way, but is the simulation as an add-on. And when we see RFQs we get from end users, automotive industry or others, simulation is actually described as an add-on. They want a digital twin or a simulation carried on and as often it's specified that the cost for the simulation should be separately specified. And if you do that you will have to handle simulation as its own step in the project. 
that means that we, in that case, in one way or another, have to add an extra resource handling the simulation. And it's really difficult to foresee what time that will take to set up a simulation. If we do this successfully, of course, now the panicked time we have during FAT and SAT will decrease dramatically because we have sorted out all these software errors, these two thirds that I spoke about at the beginning of our, my webinar has been sorted out in this part. So we have now moved our efforts from here to that. But when we handle simulation like this as a separate part in the project, we will probably still have made the same mistakes during design and programming, which we then discover under the simulation phase. That means that we have really not done a winning in terms of doing fewer mistakes or discovering the, the problems in advance. So we still have to fix the same amount of software errors, but we have now moved it from the commissioning phases or the acceptance test phases to the simulation phase. That means in reality that this is from an economical point of view, very little or probably no economic win but it is very useful to ensure that we will meet a deadline in the project. So the question is, is there a more effective way of using this? And as you might have guessed, yes, there is. And that is what we call the iterative use of KUKASIM during the complete project. And by this, I mean that if we take the software model I described earlier here and install it, on a dedicated computer sitting somewhere in our network. And this, of course, this is a one-time effort in terms of whatever software license we need and the installation time itself is a one-time job, not connected to one specific project. It will, of course, then afterwards be uh, available for all projects you do. And we place this in our network, this model, this uh, simulation platform will then be reachable for all our engineering efforts. That means the mechanical designer can move his design or his 3D step file, if you like, both of the layout, whatever tool he has, or the step file of the manufactured part. The robot programmer can download his visual work visual project to the local Office Lite platform. The PLC programmer can download his PLC code to the virtual PLC running on this simulation platform and the HMI programmer as well. And each team member then has access to this model. And most Im more important, equally important today is uh, in lockdown situation is that with the right network set up, the team members is actually not required to be physically in place. They can actually work from home uh, and still access this simulation. And if we now look at the model and instead of setting up a specific simulation part in a project plan, we instead do the simulation several times continuously during our project and simulate it as far as much as we can at each point in time as according to how much of the project we have done, we will discover whatever problems or errors we have, mistakes we have made very early in the project and can fix them equally early. That means that if we look at the PLC programming, probably one of the first bits of code we do is the handling of operating modes, for example. If we now have done an error of this, we will see it here immediately and not when we start the pre-FAT test. And we will do see the signal exchange between the robot, HMI, PLC very early on. And this model, actually, when we do it continuously, if this is 
once every day, once every week, or whatever is suitable. It will be a part of our working methodology in the project. And we will get the same benefits as I showed you on the add-on simulation. And with that, I mean the very relaxed uh, situation we would have around FAT and the SAT without actually the large extra effort of simulation since we have used, been using the simulation platform all along as a tool for ensuring the quality of our project continuously. That means that the extra cost time-wise is very low or close to zero during the project here. And it gives us the possibility to discover, as I already said, any mistakes we've made quite early in the project. And of course, the sooner we discover these problems, it's the less cost or easier to fix it. Uh, of course, this visual model of functional where we can demonstrate and test the functionality visually without any hardware required increases the understanding of the cell for all team members. Uh, usually we have a written functional description, but that can, is always uh, interpreted and different people interpret things differently. We all know that. But working around a visual model like this will increase the quality of the project as well. And of course, I haven't been in any project which doesn't uh, suddenly have a need for changes or additions to the project and working in this environment it's much easier to include whatever changes or additions to the project at a lower cost of course you become more flexible and keep in mind that this simulation is a software construct and a software construct sitting on a computer can be shared not only by with your team members, but actually directly with your customer as well. So you could actually invite your customers to all these simulation uh, occasions, which you do, and invite the customer operators to actually try the HMI in the state it is at each uh, occasion and get feedback directly as during the project. And the benefit of this is, of course, that you can discuss the progress and the functionality on a continuous basis with the customer without the customer having a travel need. The customer can sit at his own office and take part of this. And hereby, you also will have, at the end of the day, if you invite customer operators, uh, operators that are at least to a big part already trained and know how to handle the cell, even before it actually is installed at the customer site. And any demands or ideas of functional changes can be directly demonstrated with the customer without the need of setting the, physic the actual installation up. It can be tested and demonstrated beforehand which of course then eliminates any risk of misunderstanding your, with the customer you might have, because it's not quite uncommon that during some parts of the project, you have a discussion with the customer or your supplier of what was included in the project and what was not included in the project. So by using this type of digital uh, twin with KUKASIM, we want to urge you and test the possibility of actually changing a FAT and a SAT or a commissioning from problem correction to basically just doing a functional verification or demonstration to a customer. Because we have already taken care of all, most, almost all the problems we have created before in the simulation already. And that will dramatically, of course, decrease our total time we will have to spend on error fixing. And it will dramatically decrease the need of the resources we need on site for commissioning. 
with this model we believe that we have an opportunity all of us to dramatically improve the quality of our projects and the increase our profit margin in them as well of course i know that this is a lot of information in a short time are there any further questions on this topic i can't really see your questions here let's see if i roll down Uh, there are some questions, but I need to play with it. Okay, let's see how we have a few questions here. One question we have here is, how about import or export of kinematized CAD data in AML? No, there is, as far as I know, no such support. Uh, I will double check it and get back to you. In that case, if I'm wrong, I'm not quite sure if I'm right or not. Uh, what if we have multiple robots in a single cell other than KUKA robots? <laughs> uh, as you know, I work at KUKA, so I probably not should answer that question, but yes, you can have other types of robots as well, but you obviously cannot use the uh, office light to run, for example, an ABB robot. You need the ABB controller to get the correct behavior from that robot in that, but as long as it can uh, provide its access values and its position values on the open interface of some kind, for example, over OPC UI, then you could actually use other types of robots as well. And in fact, in the library of at least visual components, there are not only KUKA robots, but basically robots of all manufacturing kinds. And these objects can be moved freely between KUKA SIM and visual components. So in practicality, yes, you can actually use other robot brands as well. But you didn't hear it from me. Uh, one question is, will the VRC interface no longer exist? It will, actually. But it is not as useful in the virtual commission model we described it here. Uh, it will look a little bit different in KUKA SIM 4, which is planned to be released at the beginning of the summer. But it will, uh, because the work visual will move into KUKA SIM, the code which you create in, in KUKA SIM and office uh, work visual be, will be more equal. And that means that you have less need for office light in the future. But right now, it is. But the VRC interface will be there as well. Uh, we have experienced that doing of not using the VRC interface, but just moving the axis and position values. So, for example, OPC is actually a little bit more stable. Uh, the VRC interface is sometimes unstable, uh, I'm sad to say. So this is actually an improvement from that. Uh, let's see if I have any more questions. Is it still so that we need to buy Office Lite and KUKA SIM? Yes, that is correct. Uh, if you buy Office uh, KUKA SIM there, and specifically version 3.1, there is one license of Office Lite included, but we still need that. Uh, what has happened is that for integrators, we have 
are currently running a very attractive campaign on KUKASIM. You have the possibility, if you're an integrator, to buy it for 3,200 euros, at least in Europe. Uh, and it also will be possible to do it as software as a service, where you have a yearly fee instead of by making the total investment of the software. Let's see if there are any more questions. What about changes? If we find out something in Kukia Sim environment during testing, can we make any robot program changes there? No, you can't. Right now, you can't. If, and that is because in the current version, the robot coding software is in Kukia Sim is quite limited compared to what you do in uh, work visual. So, as you write, we sh you should make the modification in work visual, download it to Office Lite, and test again. That is what you need right then. That will change in the coming versions, but right now, that is the situation. That is correct. And the next question is, is there a plan to integrate Work Visual and Office Lite directly into SimPro? Now it seems that you have to use at least three different programs, one's running on, uh, on a virtual machine in order to produce and simulate robot code. Yes, that is correct. I believe I have answered that question. Yes, there will be a lot of development uh, uh, during the year on that point, but you can use it uh, already today. We have a virtual uh, working model, which we have set up. We, ha we have some installation instructions. So if you get back to me, I will send you this information to set up it so you can test and try this already today. Uh, there is a question, is a very powerful PC needed to run simulations for a big line? This uh, depends on what you mean with a powerful PC, but in basic, yes. Uh, you What you do need is a PC with quite a good processor, an i7, for example. You And as with any PC, it's always good to have a lot of internal memory because that will increase the speed of your PC but a standard 30, 16 or 32 gigabyte memory is enough. So I would say any PC with a, a fast processor, an i7, a modern, with a lot of memory, in terms I would recommend to use 32 gigabytes, should go a quite long way. If that is a very powerful PC or not, that is depending on the background. You do not have to have an extreme gaming PC or a very large server, no. But you cannot, it's a bit more than a standard office PC. And specifically that will, that will affect the communication turnaround time on the OPC UA. We have done a test on my own computer, which is an i5 with 16 megabytes of, gigabytes of memory. And the turnaround time in communication over OPC UA is roughly between 50 and 100 milliseconds. Then we actually purchased a laptop, which has an i7 processor and 32 gigabytes of memory and an SSD disk. And on that computer, the same communication dropped down to one and two milliseconds. So the performance of the communication is what will be affected mostly in your model when you do this, when you go up in computer power. How many external signals can be exchanged to from the simulation? Is there any restriction of data types, for example, Simers? No, there's not actually. Uh, I can't say that we have tested or have any performance data on the huge bulks of data, but uh, we have 
But the OPC UA interface and the number of signals you can pair with the KUKA SIM, there is no limitation in the software itself, but it will be depending again on the computer you run it on and the turnaround time. Next question we have is how do you simulate a machine tool that should be integrated in the cell? I am not quite sure you, I'm, what you mean by that. Uh, can you please uh, develop your question or clarify it a bit? And we have one more question, which is, can I use the KUKA Office Lights Virtual Teach Pendant to control the robots and its program exec? Yes, you can. That is correct. You can do that. Uh, Office Light has, as you said, a virtual pendant, and you can use that just as if it was a real pendant. Please bear in mind that if you do program changes uh, on the Teach Pendant, that will not be automatically transferred back to the Office Lite project though. But otherwise you can do it, yes. And in the same way, jog the robot. And if you jog the robot from KUKA, from Office Lite and the Teach Pendant there, the robot will do move accordingly in KUKA Sim. Let's see, it's really hard to see your questions. I have to. How about the safe move product from KUKA? Can tool points, etc., be simulated to? Well, actually, safe operation is not currently simulated, uh, supported in. Office, office light. So they, I have to regret that the answer there is currently no, but also that is planned for some updates in the coming versions. Okay, I can't see any more questions in the question field right now. Uh, of course, you are welcome to contact either me or your local sales. Orange Intelligence.